Brutus is extremely territorial, which is not unusual for dogs kept in kennels. Todd, grab, grab him. Yeah, so I can explain. In his case, this is his activity. I right. must protect my space. Mm -hmm. So I need some type of guidance. Okay. So here, when you enter, especially with a, with, a, with a brain like him, I'm entering a little bit more assertive, but I'm coming in that way because his energy is high. So this is good. I want you to see the body language, that leg up, mm -hmm. that's really good. What does that mean? It's waiting. Okay. Okay, so versus this, I know what I want. Remember, earlier, the whole body was forward. Now he's thinking about what to do next. This is good. Okay, now we present him. Let's bring the little dog. By me showing you this video, I don't want you to get angry. I do want you to get, you know, have feelings. Feel it. This video is not going to be easy to watch, but it's really important to get this information out there. My name is Mark Ching. I'm the founder of the Animal Hope and Wellness Foundation. We're most known for the dog meat trade and our work in Asia. We started because I started seeing these pictures on social media about a dog meat festival called Yulin. And I'd see these pictures of torturing the dogs or hanging them or like beating them up. They have this belief where if you hurt the animal first or if you beat up the dogs, then it makes the meat taste better. And I just, I, I, I seriously, I couldn't believe it. I've taken these pretty intense trips to Asia. I've taken nine of them so far. I go undercover into dog meat slaughterhouses as a dog meat buyer. At first, it was just about single rescue. Now, we have a purpose, and our purpose is to take as much documentation as possible to show the government, hey, this is what they're doing. This is why you have to stop it. I've been beat up. I've been hospitalized. Uh, it's not that so much, though, that's hard for me. It's really the emotional strain that it puts on you as a person. My name is Valerie Ainello, and I'm the Director of Operations for Animal Hope and Wellness. Mark does the rescuing, and then I do everything afterwards. He has rescued at least 2,000 dogs out of slaughterhouses. Obviously, they're very, very, very sick when, when Mark saves them. We will give them all the best medical care. If they need training for their behavioral issues, we will handle that. And then once they're ready, we find them the perfect family. The dogs that we rescue and we rehome, they're all ambassadors. They, they become living examples that hope exists. They're miracles. That's crazy. That man, he has a good heart. Oh my gosh. I wasn't angry, I was more happy and proud that he does what he does to help them remove that situation. But it's just so devastating to, you know, like you grow up around dogs and just like that just sucks. Well, Andre, we're gonna meet him and hear his story for ourselves. We arrive at Mark's foundation, where he and his team rehabilitate the animals that he has rescued from the Asian dog meat trade. Hey. Mister, how are you? So much to meet you. How about you? All of these dogs are from the meat trade. All of them? Yeah, a lot of them are stolen pets. She's from Cambodia. She's one of the dogs that got her feet cut off. What is the toll that you've taken personally from experiencing these catastrophic events? Oh, man. It's more the side effect of mm. witnessing people yeah. do things you wouldn't think they could. Having to live with everything and process it, I think, mm. it's, just, it's hard, you know, but I see like the end result and I see the dogs and it's, it's about hope and compassion and because that's why we do it, what we do and what you guys do is the same thing. Well, they're so happy, man. Yeah. This is the payoff. Seeing these dogs get a second chance is beautiful. And what Mark is doing is such an important job. How long are you gonna do this? I guess we're gonna do it until it ends. Nice. And so, you know, it's crazy. Like, once you see what they're doing, it's kind of hard to stop. They try to think about the dogs and that no one has it harder than they. And so, yeah. Yeah. Things are changing. It's slow, yes. but it's 
changing, yeah. Mark introduces us to the director of his foundation, Valerie Ianello, and a dog they hope to rehabilitate so he can be placed with a loving owner. Who's this guy? So this is Brutus, and um, Mark rescued him from the South Korean slaughterhouse. He's got very severe aggression towards male dogs. Not mm. females, we have him out with the females, totally fine. Male dogs walk by, and it's like a death match. Even behind Through this the, thing? Yes. Yes. It's normal to okay. feel challenged by your own gender. That's yeah. just mother nature at his primal self. Okay, so I'm going to bring in a dog. I'm yep. going to show you. He's going to walk by, and you'll just have to see what okay. happens, okay? All right, come on, Jacko. <laughs> Andre and I are helping Brutus, a dog Mark Cheng rescued from the Asian meat market and brought to the U.S., whose aggression around other male dogs is preventing him from being adopted. Great. Come on, Jacko. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Miss Valerie wasn't kidding. Brutus is extremely territorial which is not unusual for dogs kept in kennels. Todd, grab, grab, grab him. Yeah, so I can explain. In his case, this is his activity. Right. I must protect my space. Mm -hmm. So I need some type of guidance. Okay. So here, when you enter, especially with a, with, a, with a brain like him, I'm entering a little bit more assertive, but I'm coming in that way because his energy is high. So this is good. I want you to see the body language, that leg up. Mm -hmm. That's really good. What does that mean? It's waiting. Okay. Okay, so versus this, I know what I want. Remember, earlier, the whole body was forward. Now he's thinking about what to do next. This is good. Okay, now we present him. Let's bring the little dog. We're not gonna let him escalate. This is blocking his brain right there. That's as far as he can go. So now, instead of focusing on the dog, now focus on the human. Hey. So now the, the attention is here. Now when they do that, then you can reward that state. All right, let's do the uh, passing by. Oh, gosh. <laughs> now the Brutus is calm in the kennel, it's time to have him be face to face with the other dog. OK, so we, Andre, no thinking. We're just going to pass by dogs right next to it. No tension on the leash. Hey. This is the first pass. Normal, typical. Okay. You see, you can measure the the difference as you go. There you go. Six, second time for Good him. Good job. Okay, my friend. Sale, Andre. No tension on the leash. Very important. There you go. Well, Third time. <laughs> I'm redirecting Brutus' attention from the other dog to me, and that he understands. You see it? So yeah. if you want to curb a behavior, if you want to make a dog listen, you have to send him into a follower state of mind. You want to try it? OK. OK. <laughs> oh, we want to. Oh, Mark, <laughs> you have to have faith. <laughs> Valerie and Mark rescue lots of dogs from the Asian meat markets. So it's important that they're able to rehabilitate these troubled dogs so they can find a new home. All right, let's do it. There you go. That's right, just like that. You already made him perfect. Huh? <laughs> you already made him perfect. I, I, did, I did the imprint. Now your job is to maintain. Hopefully. Yeah. One more time. Try it again. Wait, don't start because he's in front. So even you walk in front. There you go. Sorry, Andre. Yes, sir. There. That's right. So even that adjustment, him in front and you start walking, if you begin to walk, he will begin to walk in front. Yep. But what you did is you adjust, and then you move forward. So, okay. so the eyes learn to follow you. No matter a dog's past, they are not beyond saving. But a dog like Brutus will take many repetitions before he can be placed with a family. So I want to work with him a little bit more. Well, I would like to extend an invitation for him to come to the ranch. Uh, it, it, it's just going to give you the opportunity to work on this. That'd be awesome. You know what I mean? That's really awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. That's well, a special honor he gets to go and. We want to contribute. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, guys.
I've invited Valerie and her meat market rescue pup, Brutus, to my dog psychology center in Los Angeles. Brutus was rescued from a Korean slaughterhouse by Mark Cheng and brought to the US. Hi. Look at him. <laughs> Already an American dog. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Coming in. OK. I want to introduce Brutus to my pack to address his aggression issues towards male dogs after living in the kennel, <laughs> which will allow him to be placed in a forever home. So this is all new to him. Oh, yeah. I'm going to start slow, releasing one dog at a time. So here. Yeah. A ver. Oh, but what he's saying is I am unsure. All right, so let me bring another one. Curious, but look, the, look at the distance. Uh -huh. See, see, move. Growling is commun communication, yeah. so he say, so I, I can growl and you can give me distance, all right, so I can be a dog. To help further build Brutus' comfort level, come on, Argus, I'm going to introduce him to more members of my pack. So as you see, the pack is giving him distance. Mm -hmm. By us giving him distance, he's going to start feeling more comfortable. Yeah, he looks better. I mean, the fact that this dog's standing right mm -hmm. over him and, yeah. Oh, I got a little tail wag there. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was amazing that he walked in and let all those dogs sniff him and didn't have that initial attack mode that he's always in when he's at the rescue. So that was really exciting. He's going to make a massive change here. Just come this way. Take it ahead. <laughs> you want to go? But I want you to retain that picture, yeah. you know? Just like we retain the picture of what happens in, in Asia, yeah. now let's retain the picture of what happens in America. Yeah. This is his story. Having Caesar and Andre show up was such an honor, but beyond that, to have them take time to focus on this subject of the dog meat trade is, is so invaluable. You know, it really matters. And so for that, we're so grateful. Well, thank That's you so ending. much. Yeah. Appreciate it. Appreciate you. Are you feeling good? Yeah. Thank you. This is a perfect example of how rescuers have the biggest heart in the world. They make sure the dog emotionally feels better, feels loved. At the same time, they also do a great job of making sure the dog heals physically. But often, they forget about the mind. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment, and join me on my mission of better humans, better planet.